Welcome to the Final Hour Podcast, coming to you from the original Living Word Christian Center out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. My name is Jim Hammond, and we've got a special guest with us today, Reverend Joe Morris, who I'm honored to be with. He's a, I would call him an end times expert, and and I'm excited about having him here. If you are a a subscriber, we want to thank you so much for being one of our 2,000 plus subscribers. If you view us or listen to us, please, please hit subscribe, become a subscriber. It helps us with the algorithms. Um, And I just want to make a quick addendum to last week. Uh, I've been saying for a year, not not many times, I think I've only said three times, but this, we're not about uh, spreading fear here. I just, I feel that the body of Christ should pray and should start covering in prayer now the 2024 elections. Um, And I I feel in my heart that, that if we sit and do nothing and, and just let it fly, I, 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 I just have, and this, I'm not prophesying or I'm just telling you what's in my spirit um, is, is that I don't feel like there's going to be an election. Um, I, 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 I pray every day against uh, the spirit or spirits, I use my authority that would keep the 2024 election from happening or happening fairly. And I, that, I just wanted to clarify that. I, we're not trying to sped, spread fear when I said that last week. That, that's why you pray. That's why you use your authority on a daily basis. And so as, as we get started with Reverend Joe Morris, uh, um, I just want to let you know you can see this on our sources or notes section he has a really good podcast called the end of days update and you can catch that on apple Podcasts, youtube instagram soundcloud spotify you can also access all his videos on his website edu.josephmorris.com again check our notes section and you can click a link uh, to his website, where you can see all his end, end of days update because it's phenomenal. It's it's a quick hitter. It's, it's weekly too, isn't it? And and so um, it's something that we enjoy. Uh, he's he's a little he he's ahead of everyone when it's talking about latest signs because because we search this thing and he's somehow he 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 has a special you know line into heaven with with the latest signs of the end times, but. Um, when I first met uh, Reverend Joe Morris uh, was in 2004. I was at Rama Bible Training Center, and um, uh, I would call them, although I haven't seen him in many years, uh, two people that changed my lives, uh, Patsy and Tony Caminetti, were, were directors of that Bible school, and they invited uh, Reverend Morris to come in and do a week on gifts of the Spirit. And um, he, uh, at that point, we got to meet him. Um, we took him to lunch a few times, but I never, I never forgot about that. And I've listened to him, um, uh, ever since. And so I can tell you that, that this man knows as much about, about the end times as anyone, um, that, that I've listened to or heard and, and just coming out of the Daniel series, the revelation series, I've listened to a lot of people. And so I'm excited to have him today. Thrilled to be with you. And uh, I just, I guess, you know, I just want to, I want to get, get Reverend Joe in a flow here. Um, and uh, if, if you had anything on, on your heart, you know, in, in regards to, we, we've talked a little bit, whether if it be the tribulation or, or the, the times we're in or is, is, or, or, I mean, would you like me to just start out with one of my questions or whatever, whatever, whatever is good. So good to be with you. I can't believe it was uh, 17 years ago. Yes, sir. Uh, look at how the Lord's uh, got your voice in a completely different place and got you uh, uh, doing something to keep everyone current. If it wasn't for people looking at all this, I think we'd be cl- close without even knowing we're close. <laughs> Yes, sir. So uh, thanks for obeying God and, and uh, had such a great time there that week in Singapore. It's amazing how times like that stay with you forever. So it's good to obey God. Yes. Um, he's, it's like you're going to, this is airing, um, 
you know, um, this is going to air by the time this airs. He's doing the Wednesday night service here at Living Word. He's, he's teaching on gifts of the spirit, which I have the honor of hosting. And we're excited for that. But uh, as well as um, uh, being an end times expert, uh, the, the week I heard on the gifts of the spirit, I've never heard uh, a sense like that at that level. And so, um, and I know you do gifts of the spirit around the world. You do that message. You're there. People ask you to do that message. And so I guess switching gears here, um, you know, we, we have a lot of our viewers and listeners. Um, it seems as if we were a lot, we spent a lot of time on Daniel two forty three. um, at, as you saw the iron mixed with miry and earth and clay, so they shall mingle themselves in the seed of men. And, and the Amplified says, in marriage bonds, but they will not hold together for two such elements or ideologies can never harmonize even as iron does not uh, mingle itself with clay. And uh, cor correct me if I'm wrong, that's a wrong, what some people call the revised Roman Empire, the Ten Nation uh, Confederation. Um, do do you have you ever tossed that scripture around, Reverend Joe? Or yeah, uh, a little bit. It's uh, there's layers of stuff. It seems like with all of Daniel's things, you can pick the top layer, next layer, next layer, and all of it though is pointing to like a climate. If you, if I think of it as like a climate. When I look at that, I look at uh, uh, Jesus basically saying in, in Matthew 24 the climate of, of what it's going to look like. And, and he called it the days of Noah. And I think those things in Daniel, uh, it's interesting on different levels. Daniel will show you a spiritual mentality, a national mentality, and a world mentality. And uh, it's cool how God can kind of surpass all that, but it's almost like at what point when we're preaching to the church, you're trying to get people to comprehend the climate that you're in is scary because these nations are coming together and basically taking the forefront. I look today at uh, this week, you got Iran, you got Turkey, and you got Russia meeting to try to kick America out of Syria and to try to keep Israel from blowing up each one of those set of missiles that comes in every week, you know. And uh, so it's weird how you have all those layers of the spiritual part of it, the church's part of it, and the national part of it. The problem is, is you got all the players coming together right now at once. Yes. Whereas in the past, you just had national things or spiritual things. And when you see them all coming together like that, that means we're about getting ready for the biggest change ever and that the king's coming back. It all is about everything is pushing toward this event where God physically coming back to the planet as the king of kings and lord of lords. So we're watching nations make adjustments for those, just like in a football game when you know they're practicing, they're kicking field goals or whatever, they're doing some punts or throwing some passes. And yeah, it's cool. They're getting ready. They're warming up. But when they line up on the 35, no one has to go, oh, what are they doing? No, you know exactly what they're doing. They're about to kick off. Well, that tells me different things that God's showing us back then. Amazing that there'd be so many verses about what it looked like, and people go, how can you tell when the Lord is coming back? Seriously? When there's that many verse after verse after verse after verse to show us uh, literally politically, nationally, and spiritually the atmosphere and the climate. And, man, you watch it. Uh, you talk about a day of corruption, violence. I mean, look at the Ukraine, look at Putin, look at Russia, what's happening right now. Blatant stuff. I think it was yesterday a report came out. There were 500,000 people killed so far in the Ukraine. You don't wow. Hear, you, don't, you don't hear that number kicked around very much. And uh, I think the earth's so getting ready for such devastation that when you talk about blending nations and blending iron and clay and, and empires, uh, I don't want to say they're all being tugged upon by Scripture, but, boy, people are they are following and getting into the pattern of pushing right into it. We're getting so ready for the entrance of the king. And they don't even realize it. You know what I mean? It's when you watch them say things and do things, they go, oh, they don't even know what they're doing, but they're fulfilling the prophecy. Yes, and looking at that, uh, you've got, you know, those players, Turkey, uh, Iran, Russia, and that that's – lining up you know that's three of the ezekiel 38 players mm -hmm. um you know i it it i can't believe how some ministers and or even you could say denominations mm -hmm. would stick by the fact that ezekiel 38 war um is the same thing as armageddon when they are so different but the, right. some of some of some of these people i really i i have so much respect for they know so much more than me yeah. But they, 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 
They will not leave leave alone the fact that they think it's all the same. Sure. But Ezekiel 38, uh, we've done a whole episode. It was, it was a, our, the best episode we've ever had as far as views on YouTube goes. Um, you know, no one seems to know. Do you feel like, Reverend Joe, um, and I don't think anyone knows, um, I've, I've, I believe that uh, my father believes it's coming before the rapture because he believes that's what brings in uh, that's what snaps the world kind of into mm -hmm. a almost uh, uh, where Christ can come back for a glorious church. Right. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. but then I hear so many people, it would just be hard to see that. I mean, I mean, just within uh, these different countries, um, these three, and I think you've got, you've got um, the, according to the Bible, Libya, Ethiopia, you know, mm -hmm. Sudan, mm -hmm. these countries getting together mm -hmm. and surrounding Israel mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and trying to attack. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't say they get anywhere. They, right. they get into the mountains mm -hmm. and they, they, get, they get creamed by the, by the Lord himself. Right. Do, you, do you think, Reverend Joe, that if you had to, I know, I know you probably can't say, but it, would it be before we go in the rapture or do you think that's going to be after? I'm I'm real particular about this, but I'm flexible, you know. Uh -huh. uh, and I got several reasons. Uh, I think it's after the rapture. Okay. And reason being is it, we we basically don't see God intervene during this dispensation. Uh -huh. Germany killed six million Jews and prospered because yeah. God's not judging people right now, and everybody wants to call it judgment. A lot of nations are reaping what they sow, but actually God judging things. When you see God judging things, uh, people are vaporized. You can't find them anymore. So Germany kills 6 million Jews. Who should be judged? Should be Germany. No, they prospered. But the moment we leave, all of a sudden God it's back to old covenant time, and God can kind of take his gloves off and, and basically intervenes for Israel where he hasn't intervened during this dispensation because he gave the church all authority. Once the church is taken off the earth, all of a sudden he can kick in, kick, you know, come in and say rat-a-tat-tat -tat -tat with his baseball bat. That's what I always say. And God basically brought Israel back to the land so he can court her. So when the church leaves... All of a sudden, he's going to show off for her. Oh, yeah, you're going to come and tell me going to get serious? I don't think so. So that the heathen may know that he is God. Now, I could be wrong about that, but there's specific things that he doesn't do during the church age that all of a sudden, when it's old covenant time, it's a totally different set of rules. And those set of rules are he goes overboard. <laughs> Whereas during the church age, very quiet. And I mean, to me, it freaks me out how quiet it is, but he gave the church all this authority. So, okay, you do something about it. And Brother Hagan always even said, it was the church's fault that the Holocaust happened. I agree. So with that said, when it goes back to Old Covenant time, you see things handled totally different than in this dispensation. So that's why I think that. Now, I would love to see it. I think it'd be, everybody goes, you know, even they go, well, you preach this because you don't want to be here during the tribulation. Well, I don't want to be here during the tribulation because I'm not supposed to be. It's not for me. It's time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. And, and you know, people go, well, the, you got to go through the tribulation to, to get purified. Well, so you're saying the blood of Jesus wasn't quite good enough? So all those revelations downplay how powerful the blood is. Plus, if that was true, he'd have to resurrect every generation and make them go through the tribulation to purify them. And if going through hell purified all of us, we'd be glowing in the dark at night. So, so going through hell doesn't purify you. Going through hell makes you lose your boldness and your edge and makes you want to quit. So uh, Ezekiel 38 war, though, what, what an event to see these nations right now getting pulled toward when you watch them all come together right now. I take pictures of all those guys shaking hands last year, and I'm like, they're visibly, blatantly making this alliance. I think that's one of the things about what's happening right now is so over-the-top alliances are happening that I thought I'd never see. Yes. Uh, Saudi Arabia letting Israel do flyover. Saudi Arabia letting planes refuel over their land. And now Saudi Arabia working out a deal to normalize relations. I mean, this is like, excuse me? I mean, there's there's things that you say, well, that'll never happen. Well, they're all happening right now. But I think most of it is a setup for this Ezekiel 38 war. And the other reason I think of it, too, is they burn things for seven years, burn the armament for seven years. So that shows you it's not the Battle of Armageddon. It's a totally different war. So, Yeah, that, you know, I have never, that is something else. Because in all that I've looked at, and I personally did think, uh, it would be immediately um, or pretty soon after the rapture. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I didn't I didn't ever think of it from that point of view of God 
you know, leaving it up to ch- the church has to, if there's going to be intervening now, it mm-hmm. is the church's job. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's uh, such an amazing point. Um, you know, uh, speaking of the rapture, um, are you, are you of the opinion? Um, I just had a, an, uh, not, not an argument, but uh, <laughs> one of our members, a, a longtime member, who I respect, she's, she's practically a scholar, um, mm. and, uh, but she was saying she believes only one-fifth of the church will go in the rapture. For most, she has her whole, all her, mm-hmm. I, I didn't even, I couldn't even put together how <laughs> she came to that. Sure. Um, um, the, how she came to that conclusion, mm-hmm. you know, it was very complicated. But what, what's, what's your thoughts on that? Um, because so many times in the Bible you say, you see, if you believe he died and rose again, mm-hmm. you will be saved. Right. So many numerous times in the, right. in the, in the. New Testament. You right. just see that phrase. Mm-hmm. And I'm just curious what, what, and it's hard. It's, these are, these are the questions everyone no, has. Sure. You know, totally. I, I think uh, I'm way, way, way looking at things through the epistles about who, if you, if you don't judge things through the epistles, you'll always get into a works mentality. I look at guys say things in the gospels about the church, like Luke 36, I mean, Luke 21, 36, pray that you might be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. I don't have to pray to be accounted worthy. I am worthy. He's talking to Jewish boys that aren't worthy yet. They need to pray to be accounted worthy because he hadn't gone to the cross. The rules change after the resurrection. Same thing when it comes to the rapture, the qualifications for the rapture. If you want to get to that thought pattern, it all goes back into works. See, and Paul said, so you're going to perfect yourself through the flesh? So we, we so want to earn our way into the rapture. And the rapture is not about us. It's about him. It's about him getting his body. If you're in his body, you're going up. I personally think I call myself, uh, my buddies call me the hangnail in the body of Christ. So even if I'm stupid, idiotic, ill-advised, brainless, witless, I can't help it that he quickened me and raised me and seated me in heavenly places. Can't help it. So whether someone understands that or not, they are seated right in heavenly places with him. Even those Paul revelation, it takes people, even Peter said, dude, he's saying stuff that freaks me out. It's so good that I'm him as he is so are we in this world. So how does someone take a percentage and say I'm not him once you accept him? Jesus is so unbelievably, un- amazingly merciful and kind that he takes a thief that says one thing. He says, you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't go, now you go through the 18 steps of the last day's tabernacle of outpouring of praise and you'll be ready. No, he said, just your thought pattern that shows that you deserve this and this man doesn't, you're saved. We're, and I'm very particular about, because I'm going to believe it and say it, I'm very particular about how you get saved. I'm very particular about once you're saved. I, don't, I believe you can lose your salvation, but it's hard. But I think people have so downplayed the blood of Jesus that they, I'll go into a church and go, I, think, I drank some wrong coffee. I'm not going to go in the rapture. I said, well, you had a bad, bad strain of the blood of Jesus. The one I got made me perfect. That may sound extreme, but it's extremely bold, his redemption and what he did. By himself, he purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels by himself, having purged our sins. I mean, I believe he did such an amazing job that when it comes to the rapture, that's the qualifications for the rapture, being in Christ. Now, that makes a lot of people mad because I watch guys on TV. They'll say certain things, and, I, and you immediately feel like you don't qualify. But he's not talking to the church. He's talking to Jewish boys there. And they do need to do some things. Like the ten virgins are the biggest deal. Oh, if you don't have oil in your lamp, you're not going up. He's not talking to the church there. He's talking to Jewish boys that need – I've got the maker of the oil. Why would I need oil in my lamp? That's a second coming verse, not a rapture verse. If you put all those verses in the Gospels on the church, you, do, you feel like you don't qualify. you got to get into the epistles. That's why the rapture was a mystery and the church age was a mystery. Almost because it's so good that it's just mind-blowing. How could it be that he would make me like himself and literally present me holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight? Well, Joe, you're getting extreme there. Uh, actually, Jesus made it extreme. <laughs> he set me right down at the right, at the right hand of God. So when it comes to in time events, if you don't look at yourself through that lens, you'll you always feel like you're never quite there, and that's all flesh, you know, uh, not quite there, not quite there, not quite there, not quite there. Well, I, I I feel better if I do this, and that's good. But there you go, going by moved by your feelings. If you're moved by your senses, you'll feel like you don't qualify. Man, I, I didn't wake up this morning and go, man, I feel so anointed. I've got the glory of God flowing through me. Didn't feel like that, but it is flowing through me, and I am a fire from the loins up and a fire from the loins down. 
I may not feel like it, but that's where it goes back to. I'm going to take his word over how I feel all day long. Thank God for people like Kenneth Hagin that always took us back to the word, not moved by my feelings, not moved by this, not moved by that, moved by what the word says about me. The word says that if you believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead, the same he'll bring with him. That's the verse in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. That verse 14 of chapter 4 is the qualifications for the rapture of the church. And I'm a little weird about that. But why would we be weird about redemption? I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. People will be so bold about I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Oh, but I'm not quite redeemed when it comes to the coming of the Lord. It's unbelievable that people will use the word for healing, the word for salvation, the word for prosperity. But when it comes to end times, I don't need Bible. <laughs> so uh, I'm a Bible guy for all those and with end times. Because if you're not in, if we don't get into the verses on end times, then it's just a hodgepodge lodge and you just never know what God's going to do. No, you know exactly what he's going to do because he's so flawless with his word. But when it comes to end times, it seemingly has been a disconnect to go, well, Aunt so-and-so said so-and-so. I love Aunt so-and-so. God bless her. But I'm not basing my life on it when Aunt Manny told me. I'm, I'm basing my life on what the Bible says. So they, well, there you go. Throwing that book out there against me. Absolutely. It is written. It is written. It is written. Wow. Um, that's uh that's that's some amazing stuff that's amazing stuff and that makes me feel good because that's i've said that so many times to the church if you believe he died and rose again um you're going yeah. and that's what i believe and um and that that helps because we get this question a lot um but i did something i feel like we we maybe take a little rabbit trail here sure. um you, you 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 said that you believe that you can lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. um, could I just get your take on that? Um, because sure. these are questions, you know, that yeah. either you're, people don't want to talk about it, but it's good to hear the opinion sure. um, from someone that's been doing this for so long, you know, and is so mm -hmm. well versed on the scriptures because you, I'll just be straight. You, you believe that um, probably based on a, a few scriptures that you can lose it. Um, for a long time, I, I don't know where I am now, but I, be, I I believed and actually preached a few times at different funerals. You can't, mm -hmm. but tell me why 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 you do believe that, Reverend Joe? Yeah, just based on what Paul said, you if you've tasted of the powers of the world to come, tasted the heavenly gift. Most people don't even qualify to lose their salvation. And then there's three things the Bible says about your salvation that Jesus said, "No one can pluck you out of my hand." The Father's you, know, you can't pluck them out of His hand. And uh, it's hard to change your DNA spiritually. You know, it's just like it's hard to change, change your DNA naturally. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I, it's, someone has to get so messed up mentally that they basically use their words and their heart to go against God. But I, I, very, I don't think I've ever even met maybe one or two people in the whole world that even qualify for that. And I'm not trying to be extreme like well, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, because you sow to the flesh, you'll love the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Uh, but if you could get purified through the flesh, then Jesus wouldn't have had to come. You got purified through the blood. And, and uh, I look at what Paul said there, and, and here he turned that one guy over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Notice that, that God couldn't even touch the guy's flesh in the church age. He had to be turned over for Satan for the destruction of his flesh. Because see, God's not the destroyer. So it's weird how... <laughs> He's gotten a bad rap that God's going to do this and God's going to do that, and here the Lord can't even do that because you're in the you're you're in the you're His body, and there's so much the stoutness of that. There's not even ver verbiage to even qualify how powerful that is. That I've been placed in this amazingly uh, beautiful, wonderful body. So I, I look at that, and one of my things I look at, which I'm probably so far the other way that I say it's really hard to like. If you don't know if you remember Sam Kennison, the comedian yes. out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, his parents were Pentecostal preachers. He would scare me how he would mock Jesus publicly on shows. I'd be like, oh, Lord Jesus, don't say. I mean, he, he was brutal. Well, he was so mad at how his parents were treated, so hated how religion had treated his parents. That This was in People magazine. He's on the way to Las Vegas, just got married, had a car wreck. And he's laying there on the ground. These two, this is in People magazine. The two angels are standing there. His new wife, he just got married. They're on their honeymoon. She's standing there watching him have a conversation with two angels. And, and, and he said to them, "So I've got it. I need to. I, I need to go now. I guess." And they said, "Yeah, it'd be better for you to go right now." So here he goes to heaven, and this guy verbally mocks Jesus, made saying, millions, made millions, and cursed Jesus publicly. 
And the Lord knew that he was hurt because of all he went through. So it's amazing that he's not grading us. And that's why I go back to you can lose it, but most people, I don't even hardly think I've ever met somebody even qualified. Have you heard me tell that, to preach that, Jerry? Yeah. This is where I got it. Yeah. I heard you preach it. Oh, and gosh. so uh, years ago, you probably preached that when you were at Singapore, because I always wonder, where did I hear this about Sam Kennison? But I've, I've told that story probably three times wow. in the last 17 years, and that helps me to know, hey, this was in people. But that that's um, that's I like that uh, take. You know, I just I've always believed um, that that you know the Bible calls you you're 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 a slave to righteousness, and you know yeah. a, a slave doesn't have a choice. You know it doesn't. Um, but but you know I I don't know my my I'll be honest with you my my dad and and, and myself have argued <laughs> over this, mm -hmm. and so um, you know I have to. I have to go with what he believes sure, uh, absolutely. officially absolutely, um, because he is the, the senior pastor of Living Word. And yeah. I, I can't. So when, when I get in the pulpit, you're not going to hear me. Oh. But I would love to take everything we've said and, and almost like kind of kind of turn that <laughs> Reverend Joe into my own words and preach this because this is all preachable stuff. These are questions that people have. Every day, just what you have talked about the epistles and sure. and and looking at the church and how God the gloves don't come off until the church go, until the world goes back under the law. Right. In essence, after the rapture, right. it's this is stuff that I've not said. They've they have not heard me say, and and it's just been it's really been really a blessing. Um, you know, I just I got a question for you if I could ask yeah. you a uh, bit going into Revelation twelve seven uh, seven through eleven. Uh, just suddenly, right out in the middle of Book of Revelation, uh, the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels went forth to battle with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought. They were defeated. There was no room found for them in heaven any longer. The huge dragon cast down out that age-old serpent who is called the devil and Satan. Uh, he who is the seducer, deceiver of all humanity, the world over, he was forced out down to the earth. And his angels were flung out along with him, strong voice in heaven saying, now it has come the salvation, the power, the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God, the power, the sovereignty, the author of his, of his Christ, the Messiah, for the accuser of the brethren who keeps bringing before God, uh, you know, that's who keeps, that's present tense, bringing before God uh, uh, charges against them day and night, right? And so this is against the brethren. Mm -hmm. Right. This is obviously after there were brethren right. then and the, and they have overcome, conquered him by the means of the blood of the lamb and the utterance of their testimony. And so they did not love and cling to life, even when faced with death, holding their their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. Quoting John Hagee um, at the midpoint of the tribulation, the Antichrist makes his play to control the earth. Simultaneously, Satan makes his play to control heaven. But while the Antichrist appears to be successful at first, Satan's all-out war against the Archangel Michael for control of the heaven uh, results not only in a stunning defeat, but in the banishment from heaven as well. And I know that's, we've talked a little bit about this, but I just wanted to get a lot of old-time word, more so of, of what I've noticed. And I am a word of faith minister. I am not against word of faith, but I've noticed that all of the old-time Word of faith, a lot of the old time, they believe um, that that this is Satan. This is reverting back to the original time mm -hmm. that God originally threw Satan down when mm -hmm. Satan tried to usurp God. Um, I believe that this happens in the middle of the tribulation, right? And that He is still up there, allowed mm -hmm. to accuse us. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, your what what your opinion is on on this this thing is it before is, is is revelation suddenly going back to when satan originally fell or is this actually happening right in the middle of the tribulation i think it's uh, absolutely happening right in the middle of tribulation and this is something that i think that i hear misquoted they go everybody goes well the devil knows he has but a short time no he doesn't he doesn't know until midway through the trib till he's cast out of heaven then it says now that he knows he has but a short time that's the only time the bible says when he knows what time it is that's how stupid he is 
So, I mean, obviously he can hear us talk about end times or whatever, but the Bible specifically says now he knows he has but a short time because he's cast out midway through. He has 42 months. Just like Jesus had three and a half years, the Antichrist will have three and a half years. And I think that's him physically being cast out. I think just based on that verse, you, you're think about what's happening in heaven with Lucifer being the accuser of the brethren. But we have an advocate that's right there, right beside the throne going, Right there at the right side of the Father going, okay, Lucifer, this is what you said about him? No, this is what I did for him. I believe that's a continual war going on with Jesus putting it in Lucifer's face just because of legalities, just because God, Adam gave Lucifer a certain amount of privilege on the earth because of legality. So, so the Father is so righteous and so legal, he's like, okay, he's got a certain amount of time here. I personally believe, I, I guess the Lord dealt with me about this, and you would judge this better than most people I know, the Lord told me, he said, I, I let myself look vulnerable at the beginning so Lucifer would come against me so I could rid myself of rebellion. I could rid my staff of rebellion. Wow. <laughs> I hope you're listening, Jerry. And it's like, I okay. was like, I'm like, what? Well, Lucifer had to think he could take him in that original thing where he said, I'll ascend to the north. I'll be like, this. I'll go to the sides of the north. I'll be like the most high. No, I think the father had to make himself look vulnerable so he could rid himself of rebellion. And that, what you're talking about is midway through the trib, and that's going on this whole church age. And it was going on the 4,000 years before the church age, and it was going on hundreds of thousands of years before the man even made, God even made man, uh, where this battle has gone on, which is absolutely, in my mind, every movie you see is about this. Every one of the every movies that you see that are radical and dramatic war, light versus dark, good versus evil, are all this hidden event of Lucifer. I mean, can you imagine being the anointed cherub that covers and you're right there at the throne and the radiation coming through those stones on your body and all of a sudden you start thinking you're the origin of that. No, it's what's behind you. And that's where that iniquity was found. So I guess the father through legality, and that's the same thing where a lot of people go, well, that's Lucifer you know, at the beginning. No, I believe that's all the way midway through the trip. I think he's pretty specific with that. That's kind of a long answer to all that. But anyway. No, no, this is good. I think... Um, I'm learning so much no, here. No, no, I, I, I don't know enough about it, but I know I'm intrigued that people always say, well, the devil knows he has but a short time. No, he doesn't. He doesn't know that until midway through the trip. Uh, that's what the Bible says. Uh -huh. Now, I may have conjecture, and he can learn some things through what we're all saying, but he's clueless. And I, I cannot wait to get over that t pit when he's put in that pit. I'm going to beg the Lord to let me get a violin and sing to him. Hey, pit dweller, how you doing? I'm seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. You're not seated there anymore. I'm, I'm going to mock him. I'm going to, anyway, I just look forward to that. Listen, and, and we're going to look <laughs> down at him and say, that's him? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's wild to think, you know, we are going to say, wow, that that's the guy. That's that the guy. That weakened the nations. How could that be this creature that, that had a position with God that you can't get any closer than that position and mess that up. Just how deep that God actually made himself because you wondered if you're, if you, if you, if you have any depth at all, if you think, if you're a deep thinker, you're going to think, why did he make that move? Right. Right. Why would he have made that? Move? Right. And, and I've never gone that far to say God made himself look vulnerable, mm -hmm. all right, to really purge his staff. Yeah. And it's Clean just, house. That, 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 that's... And Jesus did it again when he was on the cross. He made himself look... Uh, he let himself be killed. Mm -hmm. he, could, he, he had so much life in him that it, it took him 40 days to go without food to even be tempted. Yes. He, had, he had to go 40 days with no nourishment to even be able to be tempted. He's so strong. So he had to let himself be murdered. And he even said that. Yeah. In, a, in essence, he, he said, said it. Yeah. I, I have the power yes. to, to let this happen. Yes. And so um, I just that was just one of the scriptures I, I gave last, last weekend to the Living Word congregation. But, mm. you know, let me ask you something. This is, this is kind of going another level of depth, though. But, <laughs> but, but, but ever since, um, I've, I, I, I'm embarrassed to say this, but when I, it wasn't until I got through the the series on the book of Daniel and then I'm in Revelation and then I'm studying for my message and 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 so that's when I I said you know dad 
look, look at the, is, is the, is the devil cast out of heaven here? You know, I, what is this? Right. And then, so then I, I found out all the different takes mm-hmm. and it wasn't until then, right. Because I do, I, I believe that I believe that, that, so I thought, okay, so if, 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 if it's up there and he's up there and he's going to bring, he's going to come at me, he's going to come at me in that court courtroom, right. And he brings, brings something before God. And I've, I've, I've wondered this. Do you think down here, me on a daily basis, confessing my righteousness, right? Knowing what it is, right? Right. Being uh, cleared from all guilt um, or E.W. Kenyon, the ability to stand before God without a sense of guilt or inferiority. And I think of that in terms mm. of a courtroom, mm. right? Amazing. And yes. so if you are if you are confessing your righteousness as a promise you're receiving and 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 we know that's going on. Don't you think that that would translate? Don't you think God would point almost point back when the devil is accusing us? Look right. at I me. Mean, he knows his promise. Right. right. Do, do do you do you agree that you can do things here mm-hmm. um to affect that argument against you? Up there. Yes, and I go back to Colossians. I mean, uh, uh, basically, Jesus disarmed Lucifer, having having blotted out the handwritings and the ordinances that were contrary to us and nailed them to the cross. And when Lucifer puts those things like, no, they're not perfect, and he goes, no, yeah, they are. I made them perfect. Just like if you were going to disarm Iran, you take the missiles out, and you take their, you disarm them, then they don't become a threat. So the threat got taken away when Jesus defeated him in the, in the middle of the earth, having spoiled principalities and powers. So you know, just like Lucifer tries to, to downplay in that court battle, you can see in heaven, oh, they're not perfect. And the Lord goes, oh, yeah, they are perfect. I, God's own blood. I mean, the, the extremeness of that is that God would make man and go, okay, the only way this is going to work out is I'm going to have to die for him. I'd go, hey, let's have several lots. Let's go a whole different route here. But in Colossians, he makes it really clear that uh, you can see that Lucifer would try to bring accusation like that. And the Lord's like, no, no, I got him covered. You talk about a court case. I mean, I think it's intriguing that God does everything so flawlessly legal so that there's no, no ifs, ands, or buts, no wiggle room, no nothing. You know, it's not kind of redeemed. We are purchased, period. Now, you say, well, that's extreme. I, I'm barely catching up to the edge of the Bible. Much, you know, as far as if we if we saw the, the 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 completeness of that, it would freak us out. Yeah. Yes, and so listen. Um, switching gears back a little bit here, I got a question for you. Um, we are seeing, and I'm just curious about your opinion. I, you know, nobody can really know, but we get these questions a lot. We have people writing in uh, to the final hour podcast and. And the suddenly, after many years of hiding things, you have the government putting out all these UFO. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just like they've they've let every they've let the they've unlocked everything and said okay. And they you know you see new UFO things every day. Yeah. And 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 studying um, the Daniel series and. Uh, Revelation. I uh, use uh, one of the guys that I listened to is Chuck Missler, um, and listening to him, you know, he did. He wrote a book on it mm-hmm. and uh, did a study and uh, really deep study. But it is his opinion, the late Chuck Missler, um, that that this this is th- these are out of the demonic. Um, mm-hmm. That this is uh, these are UFOs. These this this is not life in essence, from other planets. Um, this is the demonic, the, the realm between the spirit and the physical uh, thinning right? to where we're seeing it more and more and more. A mm-hmm. um, little bit of it for me tells me some of it's set up, um, mm-hmm. you know, and the devil needs an excuse, I believe, uh, right. for when sure. millions possibly a billion people disappear off the face of the earth. Absolutely. And so I'm just curious about what your take is on, on the whole UFO thing yeah, today. I, I love how you mentioned that, uh, uh, how you said it. I think the UFO thing, I agree with Chuck Missler, that it's all, it's all demon stuff. And I love how you pointed out that we're getting so close to the end that there's not a lot of separation. 
like you look at a, an atomic submarine or an atomic aircraft carrier, and uh, those nuclear or nuclear they call them a nuclear sub or nuclear aircraft carrier. When those elements, when you get down to those nuclear elements, you're getting into where you're bridging the gap between natural and spiritual. And the closer you get to that spiritual realm, the more perpetual they are, eternal. Like a nuclear sub doesn't have to refuel because it's it's using those elements that are nuclear. Well, that that's why those UFOs are so def- defying the laws of gravity, defying because they're borderline. You're getting into that spiritual realm. I just think it's you're seeing a Lucifer stuff getting literally made known like never before because that's the whole thing is they're going to be the excuse. You know, the crazy Christians got evacuated because they're nuts. They're holding the earth back from what we're going to evolve into, and I believe that'll be Lucifer's play on what happened. And uh, I still think because he has control over the earth because Adam gave it to him that he's going to try to promote every kind of vehicle he can. But I think sometimes we forget the Bible says the harvest that happens during the tribulation is innumerable. So in the midst of Lucifer doing all this stuff with UFOs and everything else, uh, the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, their harvest is, you, can't, you can count a, a 200 million man army, but you can't count how many people get saved during the trip. I mean, by the time of the second coming, 50% of the population is giving their life to the Lord. So in, in spite of him coming in through UFOs or through everything that he's going to try to do to, to manipulate man, God still gets the final say. The two witnesses will come down. And do things, then, then, the, then the Bible says they'll see him. And so, everything of with all of that is the setup for the return of the King and the manifestation of God. That's why I like the Book of Revelation. It says it's a revelation of the King in the midst of all this other stuff. UFOs always intrigue me. I was always intrigued by like, okay, could there be this much evidence about stuff and and it not be real? And now you've got fighter pilots going, look at this thing, move it, Mach, you know, twelve and Mach twenty, where you know physical man can't handle. Just our atoms can't handle that. Right. So it is intriguing that it's all just in the last year or two. Right. Uh, which is amazing. Yes. That it's been hidden that well. Yeah, I've been by Roswell. I've preached all over New Mexico. And they always have those aliens out there by the highway. And all that. like, that. how could this be this much information and it not be? But Lucifer always tries to come in with stuff to, you know, change the, everything. So. Well, you know, I we just covering... Uh, this is a subject we we tried to tackle a few podcasts ago, but um, it's so interesting. Uh, the 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 scripture that we originally came with about uh, the them the there's a word in Daniel two forty three that refers to the Nephilim and and regarding to mixing themselves, they shall mingle themselves in the seed of men, and there's a lot of takes on that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of takes on that and. Um, you know, but, but this book, it's called Judgment of the Nephilim. Our viewers know a guy by an author named, by the name of Ryan Peterson. He's got two, two books. Um, and, uh, he's actually making the point of, of that. It's amazing because, you know, God is, the devil copies God in so many ways. You've got, you've got the satanic trinity, the, the, that you've got Satan and the, the Antichrist and the false prophet, kind of mm-hmm. like the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in so many ways. Sure. You've, you've got in the middle of the tribulation a, a, an assassination attempt, and whether if it's faked or real, he's raised from the dead, mm-hmm. you know. Sure, sure. Um, being that uh, th- there's just a large number of, of, of really qualified people mm-hmm. uh, with a lot of degrees <laughs> behind their names out there that believe that, that the same way – that that the devil is going to is going to have it that the antichrist will and this is out there yeah. please bear with me no, sure, reverend sure. joe yeah, yeah, yeah. will be the actual child of the devil that mm. that he will um you know maybe not in the same way as the holy spirit but impregnate a human mm-hmm. woman that that child will be a seed mm-hmm. an actual seed of satan he'll try to do it that you know he'll right. try to counterfeit that counterfeit it that close and these guys are taking the nephilim right sure and the nephilim being here sure right as 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 how that's going to happen at you could probably see my i was going to read about the giant of 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 kandahar that that the these rangers uh ran into in 2002 that 
that killed almost every single one of them. Wow. And one of them's coming out and saying, yeah, we saw this thing. Uh, it was almost unkillable right. in, the, in the mountains of Af Afghanistan. Just throwing that, I guess I would just ask you, do you believe that the Antichrist, and no one, we, we probably can't know, but our viewers love this stuff, sure, right? They, sure, sure. Do you believe he'll be the actual seed that way or of, uh, like he will be, it will go that far. Will it go that far? Where he, there's going to be a one, because because then we got we were arguing. Well, who's the woman? Right. Well, she would be a, have to be a Satanist. Right. She'd have to be someone that would invite that. Sure. She would have to invite that, right? Because, and because so, of authority. Are we, get, sure. are, we, are we getting too out there for you? No, no, okay. no, no, no. I I I love all this because I I, you know, when you do end times, and it seems like about nine out of ten invitations are all end times, and sometimes we we'll have question and answers. Usually, the number one question is, well, I, a woman will say, well, I know my husband want to get to heaven. I'm like. Well, yeah. Do you want to? I mean, they, they actually think we're just all of a sudden your brain's gone. But the the Antichrist stuff, I'm totally into it. And I, I even joke about, you know, tonight I'll show you photographs of the Antichrist and I'm going to kick into a gear further than I'll backpedal to, to that. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of both. But I mean, it is unbelievably amazing that God could have a way that the father could have a son through a natural woman. I mean, that seems absolutely crazy how that he could put a seed in her womb and he's spirit being and, and it's a per and jesus is god in the flesh that all is absolutely mind-blowing in itself so what lucifer would try to do is would he would make a, a a copy of that like you said he never does anything original so he's going to go how can he physically copy that i don't think he can pull it off like that but i think it's almost like judas satan entered into him okay i think maybe i i think of emmanuel macron emmanuel means god with us macron means the mark He's part Assyrian, part Jew. He said, my reign will be a Jupiterian reign. I mean, if he's not the Antichrist, he missed a wonderful opportunity. And I know he's not revealed till we leave, but I believe this guy, he went into Iraq. He went into uh, Lebanon saying, I'll be a savior to you. Uh, this, is, this is great. We're talking about Macron, the <laughs> French leader over there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to, but, no. but he has been, we, he's been on our, yeah. uh, his name has come up, I think, in the last two podcast sure so i'm sorry i'm sorry to no no you but didn't it's just it's just so cool where you're going here he, it's it's so blatant people say, wow you can't be that exact about it well i'm not being exact about it he's exact about it he's he's saying these things and trying to come across as this great uh unifier and i laugh that he even looks like the guy in the left behind series i mean look at his photograph i'm like oh my gosh the guy's just like it i know he's not revealed till we leave but we're at the point in time where it freaks people out to say this, that the Lord is literally about to come back that soon, that it wouldn't surprise me we can see them. And whether they're, you know, the nature of it is actually, you know, the Lucifer, it's Lucifer's child. I don't think the devil can pull that off. I, okay. think, I think he has to enter into a man and they're possessed. Okay. I, that's my opinion. I could okay. be totally wrong. But the comparisons are very amazing. Jesus had three and a half years. The Antichrist will have three and a half years. Uh all of that intrigues me, right. the satanic trinity, the whole thing. Yes. Because it's all a copy. I mean, he can't do yeah. anything original, so he's going to do whatever he can to copy how the Father does it. And I look at the millennium. Right now you have principalities, powers, rules, darkness, world, wicked spirits, and heavenly places. That's a copy of the rulership that God will have during the millennium. We'll have rulers that will rule over a certain area. So everything the devil does, he's copying. So I have to look at that and make sure I remind myself – he hasn't come up with anything original, so even the Antichrist stuff will be a copy of what Jesus has already done. Right, so. right. The other side of it says, well, the angels, the fallen angels, you know, they were with the uh, right. human women, right. and it's going to be the kind, if, if an angel, you know, the, they can make themselves into or look a certain way, they, right. can, they can transform themselves. Sure. And so you've got all that, and so that's kind of the direction they go, sure. that Satan's going to do that, mm -hmm. and... But uh, it's it's this is I know we're we're really deep, but people like it. <laughs> so yeah. they, they what they watch this because we're willing to go here. Yeah. We're not going to tell them uh, what to believe. We just want to put it all out there. And from someone with this much knowledge, it's really good to hear on these these subjects that you know um, people just can really think about and imagine. The biggest question I get about this is I like that you you push the envelope. It's like. They'll take one verse and try and make a doctrine out of something like they'll go, well, especially about marriage after getting to heaven, like like my mom was married again after my dad died. 
well, who's she going to be to? Who's she going to be with him when we get to heaven? Jesus said, "You err in the power of God." Then he said, "They'll be like the angels of God." Well, they think because of that that they won't be together in heaven. No, angels saw women and had an appetite to be with them, so they had they had a physical appetite for these women that they were that attractive. So that tells me that Jesus said there'll be no uh, given in marriage. That's the word. I don't have to court someone to find out who I should dwell with. Because everybody, when they get to heaven, they can't wait for their spouse to get there. So we'll take that one verse, and it also goes back to angels wanting to be with women, uh, saying, well, okay, I'll change my estate because I want to be with those ladies. And so we've we've made doctrines out of what our marriage would be like based on how Lucifer operated. Uh -huh. And we've messed up that God's so powerful, he's way beyond that. So I, I like pushing the envelope on that because that's the number one question I get is uh, – Basically, from young people, if I get raptured, am I going to be able to have relations? And I'm like, oh, dear Lord, you talk about opening up a can of worms. That's a whole other can of worms. Well, Steve, angels saw women and wanted to be with them. They're spirit beings. Yeah. So, so they had an appetite for part of the flesh. So you're getting into a whole other area of there of all that. But that all goes back to I think we have no concept of how amazing our lives are going to be during that time. Because if Lucifer can do everything he had to, can to copy it, he can't even pull it off because he can't come close to what, what Jesus has done. So it, this is some, some stuff. I'm so glad. So remember now, so it, it's not for sure that you can't have someone in heaven. Joe Morris. <laughs> My buddies are like, oh, Joe, if this is not true, I'm going to hit you with a nine iron in your kneecap. It's awesome. That, that, no, but this is the kind of depth we want on the final hour podcast. And also Marie and Buell, if you are watching over there in France, I don't know if it's going to do you any good to pray for your president. All right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, do you know, you know, Marie and Buell over there. Yeah. Sure. They're, they're a blessing. And so, um, and I, I'm just kidding. I'm sure that it, it'll help. I, we don't know. You know, but that that's some great points. I had no idea what that he said that over in the Middle East. We're talking about Macron, uh, the French president or or prime minister. And and he does look like the most valid one. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at his statements and I think it's it's interesting that he has come up in our conversations just in the past two weeks. And then and then uh, Reverend Joe comes in here and, and just starts talking about him. And, and point, you know, he's not saying this is the, but, but yeah. if we had to vote, I think I would vote for him, right? Right. If we had to vote, I would vote for Macron at this point. But he kind of, you, if you're going to, if you're going to check and have a checklist, he kind of has a check on every single one of them. Everybody goes, well, I know he won't be revealed till we leave, but he's not really revealed. But, uh, when Jesus was 25, he was still Jesus. When Jesus was 28, didn't enter his ministry when he's 30, but he was around. Yes. You couldn't ignore him. But it was a time for him to be revealed. It came time for that. There'll be a time for him to be revealed right after the rapture. So. <laughs> the whole Jesus thing I've never heard, right? And I just, that's right. He was around. Yeah. He was around just, you know, and um, I, th I think he's around too. I think we're that close here to the end. And that's kind of what we've been trying to say in our last three episodes. Mm. It could happen. All this, we are to the point where the rapture, in my opinion, could happen, yeah. um, you know, and this coming, you know, the sure. fe this feast of trumpets. Absolutely. Right? Um, yeah, sure. Um, we're that close. The world is ready for that. And, um, but I guess I, I could go to two, two different, um, two different uh, <sighs> directions here as we start to close down. Um, I just, I'm just trying to ask the Lord, what do you, what do you want here? Um, you know, there was a, there is, uh, you may have to edit this. Sometimes it looks real if you just leave it though. Right. Um, I, what, 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 what direction would you rather go? Um, sir, um, whether if we talk about, I was going to get run, if you hadn't heard of it, I was going to run down maybe a three minute take on these feasts because it's a real popular view sure. on people believing for sure that there's going to be three years between the rapture and the tribulation mm -hmm. based on the, the way these feasts, the, 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 the Jewish feasts are laid out. Right. And I'm just, w would you rather go there? Or I was going to ask, um, the other thing was, uh, bring it back to me, Holy Spirit. 
And I can do a short thing on 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 feast that I I I, uh, I think you'll like. Have you heard that? I've heard that. And okay. I, 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 I the church is so segmented and so such a set apart thing that now this is I'm going to change our doctrine a little bit for a minute. I think they actually the rapture could be on Pentecost instead of trumpets, because Jesus fulfilled the first three feasts personally. He could fulfill the last three personally, and Pentecost is out on its own in between them. And it, you know, Enoch was raptured on Pentecost, born on Pentecost. Holy Spirit was given on Pentecost. The law was given on Pentecost. See. So he segments the church so separate from it that Jesus could physically fulfill the last three, just like he physically fulfilled the first three. Oh. The middle one would be Pentecost. So I've always taught my whole life that trumpets is when he'll come, but I'm almost leaning more toward Pentecost Oof. now. Uh, this is this is a blessing because this is very you know, and I I. I'm so it's the Lord that we had you in at this time. Well, and I, I give uh, you my I give you my math, and this uh, is a 10 second deal uh, that'll you go back to Jesus said I'll be back after two days, two thousand years. There's eight different talk, verses about him being gone two thousand years. But he's talking to Jewish boys there. So if you know he went to the cross in thirty, thirty one, thirty two, or thirty three, no one everyone has a different opinion on that. Look up look up everybody and they do. Well, if it's let's say he went to the cross in thirty two AD. Add 2,000 years to it, 2032. Take away seven years, you're at 2025. Because you got to take seven years out because he was talking to Jewish boys about this, talking about his second coming. So there's some math right there. The however you do the math, whether he went to the cross in 30, 31, 32, or 33, we're within a year and a half. could be this year. We, we, I mean, if it's a piece of trumpets. If we're not that far away from the coming of the Lord, and people freak out when you say that, but that's okay. Your math, if I caught it, put it at 2025. Correct? If he went to the cross in 32. At he, 32. If he went in 33, it'd be, tw it'd be 26. And you say, well, uh, of that day and that hour, no man knows. Well, actually, Jesus was saying, I'm coming back to you on Feast of Trumpets. But he was talking to Jewish boys, though. So I think he was actually talking about the second coming that's going to be on the Feast of Trumpets. Now, that's, wow. just, that's just my take on that. Because the church is so segmented and so separate that the prophets didn't see it. I mean, Peter goes, build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What's a church? So it was completely separate from everything, whereas all the stuff is about the nation of Israel. It's all about the Jews, whereas the church was a complete mystery and the church age was a mystery. So if you're going to start doing math, you all get into it like that. So I just thought I'd throw that out there about this feast. We're going to put this on the title, right, <laughs> about this. the the, And you're catching this. Final Hour Podcast viewers, I mean, he's go from from the Feast of Trumpets to Pentecost, where the rapture could happen. And remember, we're just we're just we're talking about deep stuff. Uh, this this is a man that knows more than most, in my opinion, of everyone that I've studied. And th this is something that because we try to give you every point of view, right. every look, you know, just two weeks ago, we talked about the Jewish seven feast and how I believe that that point of view believed that that Pentecost was going to be uh, the the Armageddon. OK, uh, Pentecost was going to be the Armageddon. But, you know, this is a whole nother point of view. And it just it's it's so, the way he details it out. It's amazing. And uh, it just truly tells you no one, no one knows, no one knows the time, no one knows the, the the day, but we believe that we could get to the season, and we have it here. Joe Morris is going from Feast of Trumpets to Pentecost on the coming of the Rapture, possibly, possibly, yeah, possibly. It's making you think here, and that's all we want to make mm -hmm. you do on the Final Hour podcast. It's all about the Word. It's making you think on the Word, and uh, it's been it's been a great day. It's been an exciting day to have him. I'm excited about the the service tonight um uh with hosting you you well, know it's thrilled to be with you what a treat to be with you i can't believe it's been 17 years since i've seen you thanks for having me come yes sir i i think it's been i think it's actually been 19 years 19, uh, yeah. so 2004 it could have been 2005 um remember um you can catch reverend joe morris end of days update on apple Podcasts, youtube instagram soundcloud and spotify any anything anything else did we miss any uh, you can and, and you can go to josephmorris.com and there's a button there and you can actually subscribe to it. It'll come. It'll send you an email every week. Yes, well. josephmorris.com, the website. Uh, get all the videos on the website. It has been an honor to have you, Reverend Joe Morris. I love your thought pattern. I love that you love end time. So thanks for having me. Come. Well, this I, we can say this is as deep as we've gone on across the board. We might hit one of these little things a week, 
but and he's you you could tell you you've talked about all this stuff <laughs> this is not the first time you've thought about any of this and we're just blessed uh, to have him i'm excited about the service tonight mm, uh, god bless you guys remember you pray for your country pray for your country yes. use your authority especially over your family in regards to your family every single day i pray for you i pray for our listeners viewers and subscribers on the final hour podcast every single day god bless you thank you for tuning in